Hey everybody, Miss Jess here. We are going to do a little bit more reading from There's a Boy in the Girl's Bathroom. We will be starting with chapter nine, but I wanted to remind you what we recently read, and that was we found out that Jeff and Bradley have both been boys in the girl's bathroom. So they've got a little something in common with each other. Let us begin reading from chapter nine. Bradley Chalkers, what are you doing out of class? It was a teacher. Bradley didn't know her, but it seemed as though every teacher in the school knew him. I got a hall pass, he told her. Let me see it. He showed it to her. Mrs. Ebel gave it to me. Go ask her if you don't believe me. Where are you going? Library, he said, to get a book. Okay, but make sure you go straight to the library. No detours, Bradley. He had lied. He wasn't even allowed to check books out of the library. The door to the counselor's office was open, so he walked right in. I'm here, he announced. What do you want? Carla smiled warmly at him. Hello, Bradley, she said. I'm Carla Davis. It's a pleasure to see you today. She held out her hand. I've been looking forward to meeting you. He was amazed by how young and pretty she was. He had been expecting an ugly old hag. She had sky blue eyes and soft blonde hair. She wore a white shirt covered with different colored squiggly lines, like some kid had scribbled on it. But as he stared at the shirt, he realized that it was made to look that way on purpose. Aren't you going to shake my hand, she asked. No, you're too ugly. He walked past her and sat down at the round table. She sat across from him. I appreciate your coming to see me, she said. I had to come. Mrs. Ebel made me. For whatever reason, I'm glad you came. I meant to go to the library, he explained. I came here by accident. Oh, I don't believe in accidents, said Carla. You don't believe in accidents? That was the craziest thing he'd ever heard. She shook her head. What about when you spill your milk? Do you like milk, asked Carla. No, I hate it. So maybe you spill it on purpose, she said. You just think it's an accident, she smiled. He stared angrily down at the table. He felt like he'd been tricked. I don't like milk, he said. I drink coffee. He glanced around the room. It was full of all kinds of interesting-looking objects. This place is a mess, he said. I know, Carla admitted. I like messy rooms. Clean rooms are boring and depressing. They remind me of hospitals. Don't you get in trouble? Why should I? He didn't know the answer to that, but he knew that if it were his room and it was messy, he'd get in trouble. I didn't do anything wrong, he declared. Nobody said you did. Well, then how come I have to be here? I was hoping you would like it here, said Carla. I was hoping we could be friends. Do you think we can? No. Well, why not? Because I don't like you. I like you, said Carla. I can like you, can't I? You don't have to like me, he squirmed in his seat. I was also hoping you'd be able to teach me things, said Carla. You're the teacher, not me. So? That doesn't matter. A teacher can often learn a lot more from a student than a student can learn from a teacher. I've taught Mrs. Ebel a lot, Bradley agreed. Today, I taught her geography. What do you want to teach me? Carla asked. What do you want to know? You tell me, said Carla. What's the most important thing you can teach me? Bradley tried to think of something he knew. The elephant's the biggest animal in the world, he said, but it's afraid of mice. I wonder why that is, said Carla. Because, said Bradley, if a mouse ran up an elephant's trunk, it would get stuck, and then the elephant wouldn't be able to breathe, and so it would die. That's how most elephants die. I see, said Carla. Thank you for sharing that with me. You're a very good teacher. He suddenly felt like he had been tricked again. He didn't want to share anything with her. He hated her. What else do you want to teach me, she asked. Nothing, he said coldly. You're not supposed to talk in school. Why not? It's a rule, like no sticking gum in the water fountains. Well, in this room, there are no rules, said Carla. In here, everyone thinks for himself. No one tells you what to do. You mean I can stick gum in the water fountain? You could, except I don't have a water fountain. Can I break something, he asked? Certainly. He looked around for something to break and then caught himself in time. This was another trick. He'd break something and then get in trouble, and nobody would believe him when he said that she had told him there were no rules. 
I'm not in the mood. He said, all right, but if you ever are in the mood, there are a lot of things you can break. Things I like very much and things that other children use. I will, he assured her. I know karate. He raised his hand sideways over the table. I can break this table in half with my bare hand. I'd hate to see you hurt your hand. Nothing ever hurts me, he told her. I've broken every table in my house, he declared. Chairs, too. Call my mother if you don't believe me. I believe you, said Carlo. Why wouldn't I? Well, you should. She did, too. For the rest of the meeting, no matter what he told her, she believed him. When he told her that his parents only fed him dog food, she asked him how it tasted. Delicious, he said. Meaty and sweet. I've always wanted to try it, she said. And then when he told her that the president had called him on the phone last night, she asked what they talked about. Hats, he answered right away. Hats. What did you say about hats? I asked him why he didn't wear a hat like Abraham Lincoln. What did he say? Bradley thought a moment. Can't tell you. It's top secret. Near the end of the session, Carla gave him a piece of construction paper and asked him if he wanted to draw a picture. He chose a black crayon from a big box of crayons and stayed with it the whole time. He scribbled wildly all over the paper. Carla leaned over to look at it. That's very nice, she said. It's a picture of nighttime, he told her. Oh, I thought it was a picture of the floor of a barber shop after someone with black curly hair got his hair cut. That's what it is, he, Bradley declared. That's what I meant. It's very good, said Carla. May I have it? What for? Well, I'd like to hang it up on my wall. He looked at her in amazement. You mean here? Yes. No, it's mine. I was hoping you'd share it with me, said Carla. Costs a dollar. It's worth it, said Carla, but I only want it if you're willing to share it. No, he said. Okay, but if you ever change your mind, I'll still want it. You can make me give it to you, he suggested. No, I can't. Sure you can. Teachers make kids do things all the time. Carla shook her head. It was time for him to return to class. I've enjoyed your visit very much, said Carla. Thank you for sharing so much with me. She held out her hand. He backed away from it as if it were some kind of poisonous snake, and then he turned and hurried out into the hall. When he got to Mrs. Ebel's class, he crumpled his picture into a ball and dropped it in the waste paper, ba waste paper basket next to her desk. That's the end of chapter nine. Now we have chapter 10. Bradley sat at his desk in the back of the room. Last seat, last row. He felt safe there. The counselor had scared him. She was even worse than he had imagined. He looked at Jeff, who smiled at him, and then returned to his work. Bradley was glad Jeff was his friend. Jeff and me are a lot alike, he thought. We're both smart, we both hate the counselor, and we both like sneaking into girls' bathrooms. Actually, Bradley never had been inside a girls' bathroom. It was something he'd always wanted to do, but he'd never had the courage even to peek into one. But now that he and Jeff were friends, he hoped Jeff would take him inside one. He was dying to know what they looked like. He imagined they were carpeted in gold with pink wallpaper and red velvet toilet seats. He thought girl toilets would look nothing like boy toilets. They'd probably be more like fountains with colored water. So how'd you like Carla? Jeff asked him after school. They were walking along the sidewalk next to the school building, carrying their raincoats. It was no longer raining. She's weird, he replied. She likes to eat dog food. Jeff made a face. Did she say that? Bradley nodded. She asked me why the president doesn't wear a hat. How am I supposed to know that? Jeff shrugged and said, I, I don't know. You don't like her, do you? Bradley asked. She's, oh, I hate her, said Bradley. Me too, said Jeff. I hate her. Bradley smiled his distorted smile. Want to go sneak inside the girl's bathroom, he asked. You mean now? Why not? Um, now's not a good time, said Jeff. Why not? Jeff thought a moment. There won't be any girls in there now, he said. They all go home to use their own bathrooms. You're right, Bradley agreed. Good thinking. We'll do it tomorrow during recess. Jeff smiled weakly. They walked around the corner of the building. Hello, Jeff, said Lori Weston. Hi, Jeff, said Melinda Birch. Hi, J Colleen said so quietly that the F couldn't be heard. They'd been waiting for him to come by. Somehow they had found out his name. 
Hello. Hi. Hi, Jeff answered, blushing. Lori laughed. Then the three girls hurried away. Stupid girls, said Bradley. Yeah, Jeff muttered. I hate them, said Bradley. Me too, said Jeff. Why'd you say hello to them? They said hello to me first, Jeff replied. So? Jeff shrugged. Whenever anybody says hello to me, I always say hello back. Why? I don't know. I can't help it. It's like when someone says thank you, don't you automatically say you're welcome? No. I do, said Jeff. He shrugged again. I guess it's like a reflex. Like when you go to the doctor and he taps your knee, you have to kick. You can't help it. It's the same thing. When someone says hello to me, I always have to say hello back. Bradley tried to make sense out of what Jeff said. I know what you can do, he suggested. The next time one of those girls says hello to you, kick her. On to chapter 11. A week later, they still hadn't gone into the girls' bathroom. Jeff always had a good reason why it wasn't the right time. Recess was the wrong time because it would be better to wait until after lunch, after the girls had eaten. Lunch was no good because they hadn't had time to digest their food. Listening to Jeff, it would seem that girls never had to go to the bathroom. But Bradley had never been happier. He was thrilled to have a friend. He even was beginning to like school. Jeff had two gold stars next to his name. Bradley felt proud when he looked at them, almost like he had earned them himself. What do you want to do? Jeff asked. Nothing, said Bradley. It was lunchtime. They had finished eating and were sitting out on the grass. Did the counselor say anything stupid today? Bradley asked. Jeff hesitated. He looked down at the ground and then boldly stated, I like her. Bradley was shocked. She said that I can like her even if you hate her, Jeff said. It doesn't mean that you and I can't still be friends. We don't have to agree on everything. She said friendships are stronger when everyone has different opinions to share. You told her I hated her, Bradley asked. Jeff nodded. Good. Except she didn't believe me, said Jeff. She's weird, said Bradley. She never believes anything anyone says. I'm not going to see her tomorrow. She said you don't have to. I told her you wouldn't show up today, and she said that was okay. She said you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Bradley turned and looked back toward the school in the direction of the counselor's office. That's one of her tricks, he said. So what do you want to do, Jeff asked. Nothing. A basketball bounced away from the basketball court and rolled toward them. Jeff jumped up and grabbed it. Hey, fish nose, over here, called Robbie, a boy from their class. Kick it the other way, urged Bradley. Jeff threw the ball all the way on a fly to Robbie. You should have kicked it onto the roof, said Bradley. Maybe they'll let us play, said Jeff. Let's ask them. Bradley shook his head. No, I don't want to. Jeff watched the boys play basketball for a moment, then sat back down with Bradley. Uh Uh-oh, said Bradley. Here come those girls again. Try not to say hello to them. Hello, Jeff, said Laurie. Hello, said Jeff. Hi, said Melinda. Hi, said Jeff. Hi, Jeff, whispered Colleen. Hi, whispered Jeff. Laurie laughed as the three girls walked away. Jeff shrugged. I can't help it, he said sadly. Let's go beat them up, said Bradley. They won't say hello to you anymore. He started after them, but Jeff didn't follow. Come on, Bradley urged. Girls are easy to beat up. You just have to hit them once and they cry and run away. Not now, said Jeff. Why not? Everyone will see us. We'll get into trouble. Bradley stopped. You're right, he agreed. We'll get them after school. I can't, said Jeff. I've got to go right home after school and do my homework. Bradley was beginning to get fed up. How come you're always doing your homework? He asked, hands on his hips. He said the word homework the way other people might say the word manure. Jeff shrugged. Do you like doing it? Bradley asked. It's okay. I mean, I don't mind it too much. Bradley kicked at the ground. Do you think if I did my homework, Mrs. Ebel might give me a gold star? He asked. I don't think she gives gold stars just for doing homework, said Jeff, but she might. Maybe I should do it sometime, said Bradley. Why don't you come over after school today? Jeff asked. We can do our homework together. Bradley's face twisted in anguish. Today? I don't think that today is a good day to do homework. I can help you. Jeff started to say and then stopped. You can help me with the stuff I don't understand. All right, said Bradley. I'll do it. Good, said Jeff. First, we'll beat up those girls, said Bradley. Then we'll go to your house and do our homework. And that is where we will end for our reading today. We'll start next time with chapter 12. Have a good day. Thanks for listening.